How's it hanging, everybody? It's Blake, aka Limbo Jack from Farfinity and Twitch. Merry Christmas and happy holidays soon. Well, it took me long enough, and after months of schooling, legal protection stuff, and raising enough money for equipment, I finally got my first video uploaded on YouTube. So, while I'm in the pursuit of finding a position in the world of art and animation, I thought I'd try finding an avenue for more content creation online. Whether it be through posting art on Twitter, Instagram, FA, Tumblr, DeviantArt, I've been wanting to build up my portfolio and do something a little more productive during this time. And I was playing around with the idea of what to do with my YouTube account that I've had since 2010, but I haven't really done anything big with besides liking and share videos with family and friends. But after watching and being inspired by a few of my favorite YouTubers, specifically the animators and cartoon lovers like I One Is Out, Curve Fur, Laughing Hyena, Pymations, a few others as well, the list goes on. And I thought it was about time that I took their advice and gave it a shot. And I was thinking for a while of doing some animated shorts, speed drawing videos, or heck, wait until I saved enough money for a Nintendo Switch and did some Let's Play videos of Smash Ultimate when it came out. I never really thought about it entirely, so for now I thought it'd be cool to just do a little drawing of something and talk of a certain subject that's on my mind or just take requests from people and talk about subjects they want to do. If it sounds like an alright idea, tell me below, we'll think of something. It's all still a work in progress. So while I'm getting back on track, I want to take time for the rest of this video to talk about a question that I've been asked by a few good people in my life, whether it be from family, school, church, conventions. And that question that I often get asked a lot is, how do I get into animation and what is Limbo Jack Productions? So to start things off, as cliche as it sounds, my love for animation has dated back to my childhood days. I loved drawing and watching cartoons and animated movies since I was about 5 years old, as long as I can remember. Disney, Cartoon Network, Nicktoons, Don Blue Films, even anime, the list goes on, the whole enchilada. As much as I enjoyed these stories, I was heavily inspired to draw and make my own. I think my parents have a box somewhere with all the little books and comic strips just that I've done over the years just filling up in there. And for a while when I was young, my parents also put me in the kids choir at church and the music theater. Since I was a very hyperactive kid, but never really got into a lot of sports, and they put this as an outlet for me. And for a long while I loved it. But then I stepped away from the spotlight when I turned about 11 or 12, because I had a lot of creative differences and being raised in the church, there's a lot of things, sadly, that they don't approve of. And by this time, I was told by my brother and a few of my friends at the time, who there were people that draw and create stories for a living and actually put the time and effort to make all the shows and movies we've watched over the years. And that made me think, oh, dude, this is going to be my calling. I want to do this. I really want to do this. So, I went to college, did art commissions for people, still doing that to this day. And even at this moment, I'm in hot pursuit to make a name for myself. And hopefully, before my mid-30s, I want to see myself working at a place like Disney or Cartoon Network Studios. Anywhere like that. Because it's always been my passion to bring all these comic book characters and cartoons that I've done over the years to life. I've always been a story writer and character designer. But as of right now, it's been a rough way to go, especially being a year and a half fresh out of college. Sadly, there's not a lot of opportunities in South Louisiana in my field. But regardless about what anybody else says, I'm going to keep moving forward. I know there's something out there waiting for me, and somebody out there is heavily interested in my content, God willing. Speaking of college, before then, I was always making doodles in my notebook every time I would finish up notes for a class or make quick animated slideshows in PowerPoint in the library during my spare time and sometimes whenever I was home I would look up YouTube tutorials on how to do frame by frame drawing by drawing 2D animation like how do you make movies video games cartoons and it was not until I took a course at Nichols State University with my teacher Jeremy Grasmet we learned how to use Photoshop After Effects Flash, which later became Animate. And we even learned how to use 3D software like Maya, Cinema 4D, and Blender. And after all that time I spent in that software, I respect 3D art a lot more now with all the complicated stuff that goes in. 
if one single piece is out of place, the whole model is just gonna fall to pieces. But one thing that I was always doing whenever I was in school, whether I was done with notes in class or when I was in the library, I would always pull out my notebook and I'd always draw these comics of me and my playground friends up to these silly adventures. And based on the street that we all grew up on, I named my comic series Palm Avenue. And I actually stopped doing these comics for a very good while until I got back into college and I actually brought up one of them for a project in my comic book class. The teacher gave me a C- for crude humor. The whole idea for that said project was we had to pick a fairy tale from a hat and we had to do an entire comic based on that. And when it got to my turn to pull a name out of the hat, I ended up with Jack and the Beanstalk. You know how the whole story goes, but instead of a poor family of farmers, it's actually a bunch of stoners just chilling out in the house. And one of them has to sell away their old crappy car so they can get money for uh, a convention coming around the corner. So, but instead, the actual, you know the story, he actually gets magic beans from a very awful salesman. But instead of throwing the beans out the window, he gets so high off his behind, he actually has the munchies, eats the beans, wakes up with a horrible stomach ache the next morning, and he and his crap literally hit the fan. He just shoots through the roof, and his friends are trying to cut him down. The whole story is just too stupid from today's perspective. I had the most weirdest sense of humor with my friends. We just... Whatever was funny to us, we just wrote down in a notebook. We were laughing our behinds off with what we wrote down. And whatever was the best outcome, I was the one to draw everything out and I'd make copies for everybody. We had some of the best times when we were kids. As much as I appreciate these crazy stories of mine, the, the longer I stayed in college, my sense of storytelling and my view on characters started to change. They were more than just the butts of jokes. I start to learn a lot more about universe building and character development. To be honest, whether it's uh, an adult, a kid, a teenager, I really appreciate it whenever people take the time and care enough to look at my stuff and say, Oh, I love to look at this character. What's his deal? What's his purpose? What's his name? Does he have any special powers? What's going to happen to him in this and this place? That's, I love that kind of stuff. Especially after watching a ton of movies and cartoons, that really gets to me. I want to create stuff that connects with people on a very personal level. I want to get to that point to where I can live off what I can do and inspire people. Like some of the, like all of my inspirations over the years. Whether it be Walt Disney, Stan Lee, God rest his soul, he recently just passed away. And to be all honest, God blessed me with an amazing talent, and I feel this could be my true calling to be an animator and storyteller. And I'm not going to stop doing what I was born to do, not to mention my family, my friends, in and outside conventions, and the furry fandom. I have him to thank for all of that. Like I said before, I've always loved storytelling, no matter how it's told. Movies, cartoons, video games, comic books, in my opinion, are the best avenue to telling stories. Because no matter how many ways you look at it, no matter how many times you roll the dice, good art doesn't come from focus groups and statistics. It comes from people who see the world in their own unique way. Now before I move on to my second and final question on how I created Limbo Jack, I want to take some time to talk about two comic book series that I've actually been working on for quite some time. I just recently had them copyrighted and I'm working on the pilot issues as we speak. The first comic I want to talk about is an action adventure series called Firestorm, A Superhero Story. Some of you have seen the promo art that I've done for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all my other social media. But for some of you who have never heard about what I'm talking about, let me explain the premise for you. A boy named Dash and his friends are recruited by an elite team of cartoon superheroes for searching the multiverse for the missing pieces of a pen belonging to an ancient drawing tablet. And they must find all 13 pieces before they fall into the hands of the demon army and their degenerate master, Lord Zeta. Which is Hades spelled backwards. Whoever holds the pen controls the entire multiverse. And if Zeta gets his hand on it, it's game over for everyone. 
some pretty serious stuff right here. So for all of you who love the Avengers, Power Rangers, all of that crazy action hero stuff, you really want to check this out. Another comic book series that I'm actually working on is called Terry and Torque, and it's based off my old Park Avenue comics, but revamped in reference to my college years, growing up and living as a starving artist. In a nutshell, it's about two old friends turned enemies after a horrible incident in college. One is framed for crimes that he didn't commit, while the other one is living a big life of luxury in the Hollywood industry. So they're both neck and neck, hoping to make it big and make the greatest cinematic masterpiece of all time. By the way, there's also a party-obsessed wolf named Torque. Moving right along, final question. So what made me think of Limbo Jack? Well, it all actually started when I first discovered the fandom on the internet. I knew about the fandom when I was surfing the internet, looking through art on DeviantArt and watching videos on YouTube. Originally, my Sona was going to be a lion. I was still writing a backstory for him at the time. I was basing him off of the hauntings in the Louisiana, Mardi Gras, voodoo. It's because this Louisiana culture that I grew up with is a huge part of me. So I decided to base my character on the premise, party till you drop. But whenever I went back, I thought of the Rougarou, the Cajun werewolf. So I wanted to make this very off the wall design to the character. So I looked back at all my inspirations that I grew up with. Like the nine old men from Disney, Milk Call, the guy who did Pinocchio and Robin Hood, Eric Goldberg, Byron Howard, Chuck Jones, Butch Hartman, Craig McCracken. I wanted to find as much sources as I can find. I wanted him to be pretty much based off my inspirations and drawing style. One side of him white, one side of him black. Everything was just coming together and all that was left was a name. And since my character was a ghost, I thought of Limbo, because that's the realm that normally ghosts get stuck in before they go into heaven and hell. So I had Limbo, and I put Jack based on the crazy little comic that I did back in college. And voila, Limbo Jack was born. I still remember this one video that I saw from Camo Rovac. The furries react, which I'm pretty much that whole video series has been put on private. They were reacting to a video by Blue the Dragon, which was why people hate furries. And after watching that video, I was surprised by some of the things that they were saying in the video. That a lot of the furries in the video were just very relatable people. Some of them reminded me of the friends that I would normally hang out with in college and in the art department. A lot of them were laid back, fun loving people who just want to be themselves, no matter what other people might think. And it's not just the furry fandom, but a lot of the other ones that I know of as well. If something seems out of the ordinary or different to you, you shouldn't be afraid or have resentment toward these people. You should take time to understand. You can be blown away by what you can find. Because to be honest, discovering new things is what life is all about, and I should know. I never really came out to the public as a furry because... At the time, people were still poking fun at them, and I was already being bullied enough in school. And it was not until my first convention, which was a small gathering at the town library, it was Terrebonne Comic Con 2017. And that was when I met my furry group, the Louisiana Furs, for the first time, and I made a ton of friends. Some of these people that I didn't know were furries were actually from my school. But aside from the memories from my friends, I was still having a rough time in school from being bullied. I was still in the closet about being bi. Another thing that I was made fun of was because of my Asperger's and I was slow to respond. And before I was even in preschool, the doctor went to my mom and dad and they were told because of my condition that I wasn't going to be able to make it through high school or be able to live my own, make my own decisions. But I'll tell you this, God is my witness, I was able to prove those doctors wrong. Not only have I made it through high school, I was able to make it through college, and through all those years of my life, I was able to make a ton of friends. I'm still grateful to have so many of them in my life. And to this day, I'm still making more, and I have got to thank for all of that, and my talents. All I can say to you is, don't give up on your dreams, no matter what people say to you. 
you keep at it. Keep going the distance. And that's all I have to say. All I could say now is like, subscribe, share with your friends. Give me a suggestion in the comments of what you'd like to see in another video sometime in the future. This is Limbo Jack signing off. Thank you for stopping by.